for being patient while we got Ari set up. So um, we pl as I planned the show this year, I, I scheduled the Emerging Trends talks for the second half of the lunch hour with the intent of kind of giving you a break in the day where you could sit back, eat your lunch, relax, and listen to somebody talk about something that may be relevant to you today, but, may, but, but will absolutely be relevant to you in the future. Um, about, that's GDC. So several months ago, Ari invited me up to his office to check out Pocket Change. It was really the first time that I had thought much about virtual currency. And I have done quite a bit of research of, uh, on it since, and there's a tremendous amount of cool stuff that you guys are working on, and some of your uh, competitors in the space as well. So with that, I'd like to turn this over to Ari Mir from Pocket Change to talk about um, what they're up to. OK. If I seem a little flustered, it's not because I'm nervous. It took forever to find this place. Um, all right, so let's get started. My name is Ari. I'm originally from Los Angeles, but I moved to San Francisco about a year and a half ago. I'm uh, an entrepreneur in the tech industry. I've co-founded several companies. The first company was called Mojungle. It was Instagram uh, before the iPhone came out, so our timing was a little off. Um, but we were still successful, and we sold the company in less than a year. Uh, after Mojungle, I co-founded GumGum. GumGum is the world's largest in-image ad network. So we overlay contextually relevant ads on top of images. So let's say you visit a website. As that page is loading, we try to figure out, is this image about a Chevrolet pickup or not? And if it is, we'll overlay an ad for Chevrolet on top of the image, or maybe even a competing auto manufacturer. So we do this across millions of images on the web every single day, and we reach over 100 million people a month. So now you're probably wondering why I'm not talking about virtual currency um, and talking about advertising and photo sharing instead. But since GumGum, I actually co-founded Pocket Change. Pocket Change is a virtual currency. We are a universal uh, loyalty currency similar to American Express points, but you earn pocket change across mobile apps. So we work with over 500 apps on Android and iOS. And um, half of these apps are games, but the other half comprise apps that help you learn Spanish, apps that help you manage your time, apps that help you lose weight. And so we power the in-app loyalty currencies for these 500 or so apps. So you as the end consumer, how do you actually earn pocket change? Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to have a relationship with the app developer. They integrate our SDK, it takes a few hours, and they then define events in their ecosystem that they want to reward pocket change for. So for example, once we're live, one of those events could be, let's say, Sarah, you pull out your iPhone, you open up an app, it's a lifestyle app, and you book a dinner for two at Wolfgang Puck. If we have a relationship with that app, we can reward you with pocket change for that dinner reservation. Let's say you pull out your Android phone, you're playing a game, you get to level 10 in that game, we want to reward you for that achievement. So in less than a year, we've rewarded pocket change to over 80 million consumers on mobile. And uh, so how do these 80 million or so consumers spend or redeem their pocket change? So they can visit our store. Our store is merchandised with virtual goods, so maybe an MP3 or a machine gun and a video game, but it's also merchandised with physical goods, like a $20 Reebok gift card or an actual plasma TV, like a real Samsung plasma TV. Some of these products in our store are sponsored by advertisers. So to date, we've worked with some really big brands like 1-800-Flowers, Uber, Reebok, and um, that's pocket change. It's a universal loyalty currency. So you're probably wondering how come he hasn't talked about Bitcoin yet. I thought that's what virtual currency was all about. So Bitcoin's great. We're really excited about Bitcoin at pocket change, and, and we think you should be too. It's, it's pretty awesome. It's awesome because it's peer-to-peer, -peer, so there's no middleman. There's no bank. Um, and because of that, there's very low fees. And also, it works anywhere in the world. And it can't be stopped. And there are no limits to the currency. You can buy and sell as much Bitcoin as you want. So Bitcoin's pretty awesome. But I'm here to tell you that you should not spend so much time thinking about Bitcoin. And the reason why it has 
If you're an app developer in this audience, it has no impact on your bottom line. The reason why is not because the government's going to shut it down, although they could very easily by prohibiting merchants from accepting it as a form of payment. The real reason is because the actual gatekeepers, the ones we should care about, um, will prohibit it. So whether it's Apple, Google, or Facebook, they will not allow you to accept Bitcoin as a form of payment for an in-app purchase. They just will not. And the reason why is not because they have their own competing currencies. Google and Apple don't. Google and Apple have wallets. So iTunes is really a wallet. Google Wallet is actually a wallet. Um, and Facebook used to have credits, but they've recently repositioned it not as a currency, but as a wallet. Um, and so the real reason these platforms don't want you to accept Bitcoin as a form of payment is because they want to tax the ecosystem, right? They want to make money. And they can't make money if you accept Bitcoin. And not only can they not make money, but you're cannibalizing their in-app revenue. So it's very disruptive to the platforms. So we think you should be thinking about loyalty currencies, whether it's pocket change or someone else. And the reason why is loyalty currencies, or a loyalty currency is actually the silver bullet that solves two really big problems that impact your business today. And those two big problems are advertising and monetization. So what does that mean? Well, for those of you that know, um, or for those of you that don't know, less than 1% of people ever engage with an ad. So whether it's that really annoying banner ad at the top of a web page, or that even more annoying ad that you put in your app, less than 1% of people are ever going to engage with it. And that's a huge problem because that means you're pissing off 99% of people. 99% of people now hate you. But more importantly, they hate Reebok and Nike and Adidas and people that distribute their marketing messages via those channels, right? So these companies spend a lot of money to get the word out there, but they're creating a negative connotation with the people that they reach. And they're creating a negative user experience around advertising. And what happens is the 1% that actually do click on an ad, do actually engage on, with an ad, less than 3% of them ever pull out their credit card on Reebok.com and make a purchase. By the way, that's very forgiving. That's search. That's Google search. That's why Google's worth so much. AdMob, it's a tenth of a percent. So mobile ad networks today drive a tenth of a percent conversion from click to credit card purchase. Um, so if the advertiser's not making any money, then you're not going to make any money, right? They're not going to be able to pay you fair market rates for your ad inventory. So back to loyalty currencies. A loyalty currency helps because it allows for a positive relationship between the advertiser and the consumer to be built. And there are a few ways to do this, and I'll just use pocket change as an example, but you can do this yourself if you choose to build a loyalty currency and the ad sales team to support it. You know, the first thing I want to mention is pocket change is 100% opt-in. It's the first ad network that's 100% opt-in. So you will not earn pocket change until you opt into pocket change. But once you do, if you're in an app that's in our network, and you perform an action like making a dinner reservation for two, you'll see a really small reward dialog appear. It's the, it's the one with the blue button. You can close it out, but if you want, you can engage with Pocket Change, and we will load our store experience inside of the app. We never take you outside of the app. And at that point, you can say, look, there's nothing in this store of interest, and I'm going to save my Pocket Change for another day. Or you can say, hey, it's Mother's Day. Why don't I redeem my 1,500 points of pocket change for a $15 gift card at 1-800-Flowers? This is what I was referring to earlier when I called it, when I said certain items in the store are sponsored by advertisers. 1-800-Flowers actually pays us to distribute gift cards on their behalf in our store experience. And we only charge 1-800-Flowers on a cost per click basis once the redemption happens. And this is really important. We've effectively flipped the entire advertising funnel. We are no longer interrupting users. We are having users opt in to Pocket Change, opt in to the store, self-select the 1-800-Flowers gift card, and spend something of value to them when they acquire that gift card. 
It's as close to a Google search as you can get without actually going to google.com, typing in flowers, and clicking on a 1-800-Flowers ad. And so we're able to deliver 1-800-Flowers meaningful conversions on mobile because we sell them clicks wrapped with intent. So this works because we've aligned the interests of the app or the publisher with that of the advertiser and the consumer. If you really think about it, there's no third-party ad network that's, at that's ever aligned these three interests. The closest you get is when the publisher acts as the ad uh, platform, like a Google.com or a Facebook. But there's no third-party ad network that's been able to do this. Um, so if you can align the interests, conversion rates will go up, right? If you send happy customer, I'm sorry, happy users to Reebok or 1-800-Flowers, they'll be happy customers. And hopefully over time, we start to go past a 3% conversion rate, to a conversion rate that's actually meaningful, that makes the advertiser more money. If the advertiser makes more money, they have more margins to pay you higher rates for your inventory. So if you're a publisher, you'll make a lot more money than you are today. So I encourage you to spend less time thinking about Bitcoin and more time thinking about loyalty currencies, how you can build them yourselves, how you can leverage them with advertisers, how you can work with us or some of our competitors, which I won't mention. Um, and uh, you know, loyalty currency, like I said, is a silver bullet to the advertising monetization problem. There's one more idea that I want to leave you with, and it's a really big idea. And that is, there has never been a third-party ad network that has ever built a direct relationship with the consumer. AdMob, Millennial, Graystripe, Inmobi, Flurry, none of these guys have a relationship with the consumer. Nobody knows who's serving the ad, and frankly, they don't give a shit. So this is a really unique opportunity that a loyalty currency can provide. It allows you to build a relationship, like I had said earlier, between the consumer and the advertiser. Because the consumer feels like the currency is tangible. It has value to them. They own it. They want to earn it. They want to spend it. So this is the unique opportunity that we in the loyalty currency space believe is the long-term vision. If people opt into your ad network, if you have a relationship with them, if there's a reason for them to tell you what they're doing, you can tie the desktop experience to the mobile experience and to the point of sale experience you can start collecting information around purchasing behavior, around engagement behavior across these three platforms. And that may sound nefarious, but remember, what we're trying to do as an industry is make the conversion funnel more efficient so that you as the publisher can make more money. So that's it. I'll leave like, I think I have like two or three minutes for Q&A. So feel free to ask questions. I kind of blasted through that. Any questions? Uh, good point. So part of what's interesting about our strategy and other loyalty currency providers is we do a lot of BD with app developers. And that integration point becomes our marketing funnel for us, right? And we start educating the user through our opt-in or through the reward dialogues that appear. This is what a loyalty currency is. This is how you can redeem it. This is what's awesome. Now, there's a network effect that none of us have quite tapped into yet, which is as you start to go across more apps and you see us more often, it just clicks. And I don't think any of us are there quite yet. But that's really like the, the golden opportunity. Questions? Questions? Cool. All right. Oh, yeah. I almost got away. You gave very small numbers for conversion and mm -hmm. said you had 80 million users. Mm -hmm. How many of them redeemed something significant? So we've rewarded 80 million consumers over the lifetime of our service. Every day we reach about a few million consumers. Um, and for us, the conversion rates from the number of people we reach on a daily basis to making a purchase are in the single digit percentages. But if you think about that, that's actually quite meaningful because if you're in a Zynga game, at best, when you're one one click purchase away from a piece of content, they're converting at one to three percent. Meaning like you already have your credit card on file with iTunes and it literally just is a confirmation. That's one to three percent. We have people going through that entire funnel through all that friction at similar conversion rates. So we're pretty excited about it. You don't really want more than that because 
then they're not showing much intent in engaging with the advertisers. You don't want people hoarding a bunch of gift cards. You want people actually transacting with the downstream advertiser. If that makes sense. Cool. Thanks, you guys. That's it.